Hello dear listener, this is Derek Gillespie and this is another video highlighting the mistaken ideas, the faulty arguments, the twisted facts that the dissidents, the anti-Trinitarians within Adventism on the fringes of the church or those who are offshoots what they continue to tell our brethren around the globe leading them astray from the truth this is another video in the series meant to show you exactly what to be weary of when they come to you with their falsehoods this video is entitled what the dissidents will not tell you on screen you see a very popular booklet that was published a couple of years back by uh, Linford Beachy it's a very popular book in fact it was one of the first books I was introduced to in the late 1990s which made me realize that there was a movement in our church aimed at misleading our brethren this book was called what did the pioneers believe and it has been updated since as you can see but the basic premise and arguments in the book remains the same quotes from early SDA Adventist pioneers is what this writer Linford Beachy aimed at showing and the basic premise is that for all the years of the pioneers they never accepted or believed in any form of Trinity and for those who know this book well I have read it cover to cover over the years and what I'm about to do now is to show you some of what these misguided brethren will not show I believe that if you want to show what the pioneers taught and believed all their lives you should show everything not just selected portions of what they believe so that you can see the progress you can see the development of their beliefs and so this booklet all it does is shows selective portions of SDA history which it can which it manipulates to give a certain narrative and for those who have read this book you will know that there is nothing I'm about to say about this book that is not true in this book what did the pioneers believe pioneers are quoted showing them being opposed to Trinity to the Holy Spirit being deemed a person to the worship of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit as Godhead personalities to Jesus being co-equal with the Father and the Son I'm sorry with the Son being equal with the Father with the Holy Spirit being co-equal with the Father and the Son and it sets out to give the idea that from beginning to end up until the death of Mrs. White in 1915 the pioneers never came to accept or believe in any form of Trinity well the time has come for me to give the full story and let me give you now the balanced view the other side the full picture and you can judge for yourself now on screen 
I have brought up a booklet that was produced by this ministry which aims at giving the full story and I don't need to do much commentary because the pioneers themselves will speak in their own words. This book was produced, booklet was produced in 2019, as you can see. And the title of it is Key Trinity Facts and Pioneering SDA Quotes. The dissident SDA anti-Trinitarians won't share with you. Ellen White made plain that the standard bearers who have fallen in death, in other words, the pioneers, both before she died and those who died after she died, but they were contemporaries. She said the standard bearers who have fallen in death are to speak through the reprinting of their writings. I am instructed that thus their voices are to be heard. Well, let's discover what are some of the things that they themselves said, which are they are not being shared with you today? Fact number one. SDA pioneers did accept and teach a triune God or triune Jehovah between 1876 and 1915. In fact, as far as the research so far shows, who knows, it might have gone back even earlier than that. Second fact. SDA pioneers accepted a biblical version, what they themselves called the Bible doctrine of the Trinity. A biblical version of the Trinity before 1915. But what is plain is that they always rejected the Roman Catholic version of the Trinity. Fact number three. three SDA pioneers long before 1915 saw Jesus as co-eternally and co-equally the only true God and as God the Son. Fact number four. SDA pioneers long before 1915 changed their views on the Holy Spirit not being a third or a separate personal being. Fact number five. The Bible does prove three personal Godhead beings or three living persons of divinity. And the pioneers themselves showed that they understood this as they scattered their, their expressions with Biblical proofs to support that belief they gradually grew into. And so, this booklet which I'm promoting, which you will have for yourself, free of cost, to download and read, will give you the full details of what I'm about to show you. But let's begin, first of all, with fact number one which is a sample of what this book will be sharing with you, dear reader. Fact number one. Yes, the pioneers from early as 1876, perhaps even earlier, but long before 1915, they started to teach that our God is threefold or triune and that God's name is a threefold name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit or the singular name of the triune deity. Now you may say, well, that's your interpretation, but you don't have to take my word for it. Let's allow the pioneers that were who were contemporary with Mrs. White, alive with her, to speak. Review and Herald, March 16, 1876, page 82. Pioneer speaking. In the former dispensations, God was known by such appellation as the Lord, the Almighty God, the I Am, and the Jehovah God. But in the ordinance of baptism, according to the Gospel Commission, in which ordinance we take upon us the name of the God we worship, He, who is this He? The God who was formerly called the Almighty God, the I Am, the Jehovah God, the Lord God, as seen clearly above. He is known, in other words, presently, in the present dispensation, this God, he is known as the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The pioneers continued. Now if this be truth, be the truth, as it most certainly is, then it follows that to believe and confess this truth is to answer a good conscience toward God. When we are baptized in the name of the Father, 
Son, and Holy Ghost as the true and living God. In other words, these three are the true and living God as our creator, as our preserver and savior. We at once and forever renounce and separate ourselves from every kind and species of idolatry. That was 1876. By 1881, in Review and Herald, January 4, here's what Mrs. White was speaking, was saying about that very same God that was described that way in 1876. Let us consecrate to him. In fact, Mrs. White was, was, was appealing to those who send their kids to, to Battle Creek to worship to worship God. She was appealing to the brethren at the time. Let us consecrate to him. Obviously she was talking about the Lord our God. All that we have. And all that we. All that we are rather. And all that we have. And then may we all unite. To swell the songs. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above he heavenly host. Praise Father. Son and Holy Ghost. And we know she was talking about worship because in the in a few lines earlier she was appealing to those who send their, their kids to Battle Creek to worship with those in the church. That this is what they should do. Let us consecrate to him, our God, all that we are and all that we have. And then may we all unite to swell the songs. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. And who is this him? Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No need to comment. That's Mrs. White being very, very clear. By 1890, here's what the signs of the times in October 15 on page uh, 315 of that article said. As the church on earth is working by direct command and agency of three distinct personages. Same term Mrs. White used to describe father and son as separate beings. Here they made plain three distinct personages, of course, of the mean individuals in heaven. For the increase of the heaven, the family, in whose name shall we adopt them in this family? Of course, via baptism. The answer came in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Matthew 28 and verse 19. And what did the signs of the times pioneers call this group by 1890? There you see the title of the article, The Trinity. E.J. Wagner, by 1894. And by the way, 1894 would have been the year when Adventists were by then, in their 50th year, from they started as a movement in 1844. So within the first 50 years, here's what E.J. Wagner grew to accept and proclaim. He was speaking to a uh, board of managers for a school. I suppose he was probably a member of the board. And this is what he said to them in the Present Truth magazine of February 15, 1894 on page 101. In the course of lessons as opportunity occurs, you will impress upon the children the relation in which they stand to God the Father as their creator, to God the Son as their redeemer. Notice, God the Son, and to God the Holy Ghost as their sanctifier. Notice, God the Holy Ghost. That was in 1894, which means that by 1894, 50 years, by 1890, less than 50 years, they were speaking of the God had been called, properly called the Trinity. By 1881, Mrs. White was declaring that praising God naturally included praising Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. By 1876, the pioneers were speaking of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being together the true and living God. And of course, notice that they call them collectively together one He. This is the pioneers we're talking about. In 1898, Ari Underwood, in an article called The Holy Spirit, A Person, Review and Herald, May 17th, 1898, page 310. By that time, he started to show that the pioneers had become uncomfortable with their earlier views that the Holy Spirit was not a real person or a real individual being. Notice what he says. We, yes, the pioneers, he was appealing to, want the truth because it is truth. And we reject error because it is error. 
regardless of any views we, obviously the pioneers, may formerly have held, or any difficulty we may have had, or may now have, when we view the Holy Spirit as a person. Light is sown for righteousness. Satan's scheme is to destroy all faith in the personality of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And also, of course, destroy faith in his own personality, obviously as a living being. Let us beware, Satan shall lead us to take the first step in destroying our faith in the personality of this person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost. Here was Uriah Smith by 1896. First 50 years of Adventism, just two years after the first 50 years came around. Notice now his new acceptance of a term that they earlier rejected. Do scriptures warrant praise to and worship of the Holy Spirit? A question came in to him as editor of the Review and Herald. Here is his answer. In the formula for baptism, the name Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit is associated with that of the Father and the Son. And if the name can be used thus, why could it not properly stand as part of the same trinity? In the hymn of praise, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uriah Smith well knew that the term Trinity, when applied to persons, mean three persons, united. And here he, despite he had not yet become a full um, believer in the Trinity of the Godhead, but at least he started to see that the term was applicable. That was Uriah Smith in 1896. By the time 1900 came around, here is what the pioneers, allied with Mrs. White, started to say review and herald volume 77 april 3 1900 page 210 let him the holy spirit make you know beloved how surprisingly beautiful are the blended personalities of our triune god manifested by the personal presence of the holy ghost i remind you that the word triune simply means a unity of three persons and here they are admitting that our god is a unity of three persons by using the very term triune that earlier they had rejected. Quotes you will not have the dissident showing you. All they will show you are the quotes from the pioneers in the earlier years before they grew into further knowledge and further acceptance of things that they earlier had rejected. Here is a pioneer in the Atlantic Union Gleaner of August 2, 1905 making plain how baptisms were conducted in the Adventist church in those years. In the afternoon at 3.30, I conducted a singular baptismal service in the home of a sick sister who, although bedridden, anxiously desired a burial with Christ. A bathtub was procured and after straight talk on the necessity of baptism and salvation through it, I buried Sister Jenny Bagley in the name of the triune deity. Notice the capital D, which means... It is a term for simply the Supreme God, the triune deity. And I remind you that in the Noah Webster's Dictionary of American English of the time, which is what the pioneers would have used, and including Mrs. White, here is what the word triune means. The word triune as applied to divinity simply meant the following to the SD pioneers. Triune, three in one, an epithet applied to God to express the unity of Godhead in a trinity of persons. This was nothing new in 1905 because as you can see from as early as 1876, the pioneers repeatedly started to echo this new understanding. Just give you a few more quotes because I am going to leave you, dear reader, listener, to explore the issue for yourself via the very words of the pioneers, which is why it's a we are to repeat. And obviously not just repeat one side of the story, but give the full story. I have no problems admitting that in the early years they were opposed to any form of trinity. But notice in the 1870s, 1890s, continuing into the 1900s, while Mrs. White was very much active and alive, here we have the pioneers telling us, just like Mrs. White, who said, God, once you consider God, you are thinking of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Once you worship God, you're praising Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Their own words. 
I don't have to add or pad or change anything. Let me continue. Here in Signs of the Times, January 6, 1904, volume 30, page 1. On the very first page, here is what the leading missionary periodical of the Adventist Church at the time said. We are children of a father with all comfort in his holding. Jesus, the man obviously, is our elder brother and his blood for us he gave. While the Holy Ghost, the comforter, each heart by truth is molding. So, notice, the great triune Jehovah. We know that Jehovah is the very name of God. And by saying triune Jehovah, it's another way, another way of saying the triune God. Is omnipotent to save. Notice, he, collective term again, is building mansions for us. As children, we obey him. And the image and likeness lost by grace shall be restored. One another pioneering um, periodical, roughly in the same period, tells us. Oriental Watchman, volume 16, August 1913, page 233. The universal sovereign. Who is that? Obviously, the triune Jehovah. Cast man in the image of the Godhead. Notice the Trinity. 1905, Present Truth, March 23, one eight, page 183. May we all in glory, in other words, when we get to the kingdom, praise the triune through endless days. And you know, it is fascinating that here is what the pioneers were wishing for, for themselves in 1905. Five, may we all in glory praise the triune through endless days. And let me just skip now to find a quotation from Mrs. White herself making a prediction as to what will happen in paradise when we actually get there to praise God through endless days. Notice what she says. Sent off the screen. Manuscript 139, 1906. So that would have been just one year after. Here's what Ellen White predicted. Predicted as the saints in the kingdom of God are accepted in the beloved. That means they're accepted through Jesus Christ in par paradise. They hear, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And then the golden harps are touched. The music flows all through the heavenly host. In other words, everybody in heaven who are created beings. And they fall down and worship the father and the son and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. That, of course, would include the redeemed of earth. And so, what can I say? These are the pioneers themselves speaking plain about what they had come to believe. And, I mean, Mrs. White and the pioneers spoke of the three distinct living persons of the Godhead. And... I don't have to tell you how they saw them. Let me allow them to speak. They're in the center of the screen. Review and Herald, volume 78, number 1, January 1, 1901, page 2. Pioneers said when there were no worlds, no created being, not even an angel. In fact, from all eternity past, there were only three beings. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Same way E.J. Wagner described them by 1894. These three persons in the goddess. You'll notice the interchangeable um, terminology. Beings, persons. E.J. Wagner himself said, they're at the, in, now in this end of the screen. In Present Truth, 1902, volume 18, page 83. He was describing the being or the existence of God. And notice what he says. As to the being of God, the Godhead, divinity as revealed in the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. We as we as the pioneers obviously believe and teach just what the Bible says. So all the, what I'm quoting here is what the pioneers believe that the Bible teaches. They always rejected the Roman Catholic version of the Trinity, and this book in front of you now being displayed will reveal what I mean as you download this book for yourself and see their understanding as pioneers. As to the real biblical version of the Trinity compared to the Roman Catholic version. I don't have to tell you what they said. You can read it for yourself. And so, I close 
with one last quotation center of the screen well let me read two god is worshipped because he's creator and god means the godhead father son and holy spirit for all are mentioned as having part in creation present truth volume 29 november 27 1913 page 7 57 it is so plain from the pioneers i don't need to comment i close with this quotation review and herald volume 89 1912 the godhead is composed of three personal beings and these three are one the oneness of the godhead must then consist not in personality but in some other kind of oneness in other words these three beings are not one literal person just as the roman catholic would have illustrated them with three heads of jesus surrounding one brain and one neck no they saw them as separate beings i don't have to comment here are their words let us apply the bible idea of oneness of individuals to the godhead and see if it will contradict the possibility of three or more individuals being called one we have two visible institutions in this world that are bible illustrations of god's idea of oneness marriage and the church dear listener my brothers and sisters in the seven Adventist church i do not need to say much because the pioneers have said it in their own words ellen white makes plain the standard bearers who have fallen in death are to speak through the reprint reprinting of their writings so we show when they earlier opposed the trinity in every way and if we are going to be honest and objective we should show them when they gradually accepted a different version of the trinity compared to the roman catholic version that's honesty of research objectivity in looking at the historical facts and of course this book on screen free for download the link will be placed below this video for you to download there you see on screen the marked contrast between the Roman Catholic version of the Trinity on the left. Three heads of Jesus surrounding one brain, one neck. So it's not three separate beings. That's the Roman Catholic Trinity. As opposed to the, Ro the SDA version on the right, you can see. Father and Son seated on the same throne. Separate beings. Holy Spirit in an emblematic form as the personal representative presence of Father and the Son wherever that Holy Spirit goes. That's the SD pioneer version of the Trinity compared to the pagan inspired image you see on the left. You don't want to ignore the full story. So download this book and get the full story for yourself. And don't let the dissidents mislead you by selectively quoting only certain aspects of Adventist history. And manipulating the narrative to mislead you and to lead you astray. Thank you for listening. Download the book. The link is placed below this video. Thank you.